the cranium and the atlas vertebrae. Okay? That's the cranium right here, guys. Then chapter to the cranium and the atlas vertebrae will be right, right here. Okay? So you said dorsal, dorsal limit will be the will be the um, between the cranium, between the cranium and the atlas vertebrae and the ventral limit is established by the pharynx or it lies between the pharynx and the beginning of the esophagus. Okay? Can you speak up a little bit? Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, just um just trying to establish the location of the guttural pouch. You said there is a dorsal limit and a ventral limit. The dorsal limit is established um, between the cran the cranium, the cranial cavity and the wing and or the atlas, whatever. And the ventral limit is established between the, the, the pharynx and the beginning of the esophagus. That is easy to visualize. All right? And here it is right here. Okay? So that space we've seen right here would be what is known as the guttural pouch. Guttural pouch, okay? Now, um, what is, where does it originate? Where, where does it come from? Remember we spoke about the, the auditory tube? Well, then the guttural pouch is a ventral extension of the auditory tube. All right, mucus just goes in between two cartilaginous structures and form that, that pouch. So we know where it comes from now, we know the location of it, and we are seeing it now in our eyes. The anatomical structure is that it is composed of two chambers or two sides, or two, two, two um, segments, okay? And that segment or side or two chambers, I could say chambers, is given by by a bone that runs through the, the, the space, right? And that is the stylo hard bone, all right? If you look right here, right in the center there, guys, I'm gonna go around, starting from this end there, that white structure here, that is stylo hard bone, right? I right, notice that, notice that um, you have two, on, on both sides of the, of, the, of the bone, we have two spaces, all right? So that would be the medial side, or the medial chamber of the pouch, and that will be the lateral chamber of the pouch. Okay, those chambers are given by that bone, the star, which is described as the stylohyoid bone. Okay, I'm going back to I'm coming, coming there, right? So here we have that entire space here, released to the lateral pouch. All right, and um, it's given the, the chambers. There are two chambers: a lateral and a medial chamber. That is given by a bone that is known as the stylohyoid bone that separates it into medial and of course lateral chambers. Have we seen it? Medial and lateral chambers. Yeah, okay, so that entire space here, of course, we list to the guttural pouch. Which probably doesn't by itself doesn't have um, doesn't have any important function by itself. But it is related of course it produces mucus and so on. But it becomes even more important because it is related to, to some structures that that is in direct relation with, with the pouch. For example, we have some very important nerves that pass that will have a direct relationship to the pouch. Okay, from number nine to number twelve, we have glossal pharyngeal, the, the vagus, the accessory, and hypoglossal. Right, that passes through the area of the pouch. All right. Also, the sympathetic part of the the cranial, the sympathetic nerve. That is cranial, the part that is cranial to the cranial cervical ganglion also has a relationship with the pouch. Alright? We also have a very important um, artery that passes through the pouch, that is internal, internal cortic artery. There is relationship with some lymph, with a lymph node that is a medial retropharyngeal lymph node. Alright? Now, all these can be, can, if all these can be affected. In other words, if we, if for example we have a problem when you have inflammation of the pouch for whatever reason, maybe my mycotic infection, or you have in some cases um, you have streptococcus infection, all right? To be specific, streptococcus echi um, can cause inflammation of the pouch. And obviously, if this happens, then you affect your your, your those other structures that is in relationship with the pouch. All right. So then you will start seeing the signs that um, that that um, would be as a result of those structures being being affected. Right? We have the vagus nerve. Right? The vagus nerve um, contributes so contribute to what the 
following, right? Right? So then obviously you have problem and, and so on. Okay? You have the internal um, internal cauda artery that passes there on its way to supply the, the structures of the brain. Um, sometimes you have um, you have a lesion there, maybe it's a mycotic in infection or the shepicocos infection or the, could erode the walls of that artery. And as a result you get intense bleeding within that pouch. And if you get intense bleeding within the pouch and so on, then obviously it's very painful. You're going to see a bulge, which, is, which we talked about in a while, on the, the, the aspect, the lateral aspect of the, of, the, of the pouch. You're going to see a big bulge there, and that is very painful. Okay? Um, also, you have um, the signs that are related to the Horner's Horner syndrome. And we know what is the Horner, Horner syndrome, right? Um, it's that you will see probably drooping of the eyelids, you see constriction of the pupil, possible constriction of the pupil. Um, elevated temperature in the air inside that is affected, etc. etc. Okay? And that's because we have all those structures um, having a relationship with that pouch. Now, suppose we, we, we have an infection. Alright? We have an infection. Obviously, it's inflamed and we're going to have an accumulation of pus and mucus in the pouch, right? We said that you have a capacity of three to, three to 500 milliliters, all right, capacity. So could you imagine that amount, that amount of uh, mucus is, is accumulated in the pouch, in the pouch right? Obviously that, that would be very painful and, and wouldn't be easy for the animal. So one of the signs that you will see is that the animal sort of leans his head and doesn't want to raise his head, his head, all right? As a clinician, your objective would be to drain drain that um, that pouch, okay? For draining the pouch, you can you can do you can do a surgical inter 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 intervention, and that is a direct directly above the parotid gland. When I say above the parotid, the area of the parotid gland, which means that you have to reflect the parotid gland because the pouch in the lateral aspect is covered by the parotid gland, okay? So if you want to do a surgical intervention, obviously you have to reflect that gland and to get to be able to get to that pouch. Right? But that is probably the, the that is probably the, the most um, you know the, the one that is probably most extreme. Alright? You can simply establish a boundary that is a boundary that is referred to as the firebox triangle. The firebox triangle. Once you establish the boundary or the firebox triangle, then you can insert a syringe, a long syringe in that area and Extract, extract the, the, the fluid that, that, is, that is inside the pouch, okay? Now the boundaries of the fibrox triangle is given by the tendon of the stenocephalicus, right? And that would be the dorsal, dorsal caudal boundary, right? So here, if, if you remember what I section, this here would be the, would be the, um, the stenocephalicus muscle, right? So we have the tendon going this way, okay? So the tendon of the stenocephalicus muscle. That would give the dorsal caudal boundary of the fiber of the triangle. The cranial boundary mm, is established, will be given by the coral border of the mandible. Alright, so here's the mandible. Alright? Right there. And then, if you remember, one of the branches of our external jugular vein would be your linguofacial vein. Alright? So, suppose the probe represents the external jugular vein. We have, um, we have maxillary. Alright? And we have the linguofacial, linguofacial vein. Alright? So here you have this triangle being, being established. And guys, have been established. So the idea, once you've established and you know where those boundaries are, and then you get your needle, your needle in between there and um, to be able to extract inflammatory fluid from within the, within the, within the, um, okay? So what are the boundaries of the, of the vibrox triangle? The boundaries? Yeah. 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 Ten Tendon. 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 Anybody want to give a next one? The mandible, the color border of the mandible, and the ventral border would be would be the ventral border is established by the lingofacial vein. Okay? And remember the lingofacial vein when we when we dissect the dog, right? Alright, so um some of, some of the signs the signs that are that are um, that are associated is signs related to the Horner syndrome, you know what they are. Alright, when you see them, 
those times you start thinking, you start thinking about our coach. Okay, apart from this, you'll have the facility or the special privilege of, of being able to assess that area. Okay, venture to the air to see if it's, if it's sudden. And if it's sudden, then you know that most likely you might have a problem with the control coach itself. Once you have a problem there, then you don't want to get, I said the last reason probably would be, would be after having to reflect the power to plant. So then you establish your boundaries, which is given by the, the, the different points that I told you about. You get a long syringe and you start extracting the fluid, the fluid from there. Okay? Um, we speak about some of the signs, that some of the, 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 what, give, what gives it the importance. We said that um, some of the important nerves that passes through that area. All right, from nine to twelve. Okay, we know what they are. All right. We also have the internal carotid artery that also could create extensive bleeding. They call epistatis. Okay, in that area. So that is care, guys, of the um, of the cortical pouch. We know the location now. Hmm? Exam, an exam. This is start here. This is start of our bone, right? All right. Most likely, most likely, um, you would you would be tagged. The, the that area here could be tagged. And it's got all pouch. What else could you say about it? I think most of the, of the question could be coming from in a theory, theory exam, written exam. You know, what are the signs that you see, and then you have to be in line the honors, the honors, what you know, the honors injury. If you see those signs, and also signs that related to those nine to twelve nodes that pass each other. Okay, but um, in terms of a practical exam. The guttural approach is, is, is purely straightforward. Here, ID area. The only other thing that you can name there is the style of high Alright, so, so probably you have a lot of more reading to do.